Nations, rest breaks and meal breaks amendment bill, and I hope to actually address some of the points of the bill, unlike the previous speaker. But unashamedly, I stand up here to say that I do support workers' rights at work. I support their rights to have a fair rate of pay, to be safe and healthy, to work a reasonable number of hours and to have a holiday from time to time and to have, yes, breaks, breaks during the working day. Now, meal and refreshment breaks, I think, are a right and most New Zealanders would consider them a right. And that's been the case for a long time. People will tell you the law provides them for them to have um, a rest break or a lunch break or whatever, and currently it does. That is right. But for a significant period of time, after the national government dismantled our award system under the Employment Contracts Act, there was no legal right other than what was negotiated in contracts and what was provided for in health and safety provisions. So despite the fact that New Zealand is thinking, yes, we all have a right to a morning tea break and a lunch break and an afternoon tea break or whatever, which we do now have thanks to the last Labor government, there was a period where there wasn't that right, and that's where we're heading back right now. And I have to say that I think that that's very short-sighted. I've seen no evidence provided for the need for this, and as uh, Trevor Mallard indicated, in fact, the Minister put this through as a matter of great urgency and that it left it languishing, uh, no consultation with anybody since, and no examples of why we need this. But what will happen is that this bill will mean that certain workers, the most vulnerable workers certainly, will miss out on having breaks when they need them. Who's at risk? Young workers, migrant workers, workers for whom English is a second language, for starters. And the Service and Food Workers Union will tell you that one of their most common inquiries leading up to this legislation was around their rights to have a break, to have a cup of tea, to have something to eat. And anywhere in any of the service industries, you will see that tension, whether that be a service station, a retail outlet, a cafe or a restaurant. And certainly, in my experience in the retail industry, that was the case. People were pressured not to have breaks. People worked through and didn't have breaks. Now, I just want to remind people across the House that you voted for the current Act. You supported this Act. I mean, I don't know what's happened in the meantime, but, and uh, True Mallard certainly quoted from the Minister across the House there, but she certainly said that uh, you know, it was important to have these breaks for health and safety reasons, for socialising between employees and happy and productive workplaces. Um, so, you know, all of these good reasons. Well, those reasons, Minister, they still exist. And so I just want to reiterate them. Sue Maroney has quite rightly pointed out a fundamental, which is health and safety. Fundamental, but it is other things. It is so workers can refresh themselves. It is so they can balance some of their other responsibilities. Most people do need to be able to ring the kids or pop out to the shops or go and post some letters, things like that. This is the nature of working life nowadays, with two, often with two adults working in a, in a family. And the current provisions are flexible. And I don't think anybody across the House has even looked at the Act by the sound of the contribution so far. So it is an absolute disgrace that this is being introduced and was introduced less than a year after the um, Act came into force without any real analysis of um, how that was working. What is the reason? Is it an, another example of the, what the Prime Minister said in his speech when he opened the House this year about looking at all these costs that labour rights were imposing on employers and the meaning that jobs weren't created. I mean, certainly, let's have the flexibility not to have any rights at work. Will that create more jobs, impose less costs? People need to have, in modern productive employment relations, they need to have their right, rights at work protected. And this government has already got quite a substantial list of rights that have been taken off people. So I just note that in times of high unemployment that this country is currently facing, this right to negotiate your meal breaks on this level playing field, this magical level playing field, are even more difficult. When you are part of a, a group that perhaps has uh, unemployment rates of up to 30 per cent, young Māori, 
men, perhaps, and you finally get a job, are you going to go in there and, and feel that you've got the right to negotiate with the boss on the breaks that you want? Frankly, I think what you'll be doing is taking the job on the employer's terms. And some of the language in this bill, um, very vague concepts. Timing is to be at the discretion of the employer subject to the requirement of reasonableness. Well, I'd like somebody across the road, uh, across the house, sorry, to tell me what that might mean. Well, how about these compensatory measures um, where there's no objective manner for measuring their adequacy in particular cases and will lead, in fact, to the opportunity for greater disagreement between employers and employees. Again, not going to be particularly productive and, and something that supposedly this government is very much committed to, although we haven't seen a lot of evidence of that. What really annoys me about this is it's, this bill is actually quite sneaky because it dresses it up. You read all the, the um, language around this. It dresses it up to say, oh, we're going to maintain your rights to have these rest breaks and meal breaks. We'll retain them. Um, but essentially, all of the rights now are put in the hands of the employer. All of it, ultimately, is up to the discretion of the employer. Minister, you can shake your head, but perhaps you might want to refresh yourself with what the bill actually says. Because ultimately, with this magical level playing field, let's say there is actually a negotiation, if there can't be an agreement reached, who gets to decide? The employer gets to decide. The employer gets to set any requirements on the length of the break or how the break is actually taken. All of that is actually in this bill. So ultimately the right will lie with the employer. That's what you're proposing here. And I think this will lead to greater uncertainty and greater disputation in some workplaces. But most worryingly, I think it will revert us back to the situation prior to the legislation, the current legislation coming into this House, which was the reality for many workers that they didn't get a break. Maybe they got one sometimes, but often they didn't. They didn't get the breaks that people felt were the normal breaks that New Zealand workers were entitled to by law. The reality was quite different to that. And that's what I think is very sad about what's being proposed here. For some reason that has not been clearly articulated, we are destroying a piece of legislation potentially that was you know, in place for less than 12 months, as I've said, when the Minister, in great urgency, put this bill into the House and then left it languishing there for a number of months, uh, did nothing further on it. Well, you know, I really do ask members opposite to think about what you are trying to achieve with this. And again, I would like the Minister to stand up and take a call. Tell us what this reasonable opportunity... Tell us about the reasonable opportunity for rest and re um, refreshment. And who's going to decide that? Who is going to decide what restrictions are reasonable and necessary? And who is going to say what these compensatory measures will look like? I mean, will it be... Will it be acceptable for you to uh, agree that you will not have any breaks for a period of three weeks and then have a whole day off? Is that a fair measure? How good is that for health and safety? Let me finish by giving um, an example of the health and safety issues that Sue Moroni raised earlier. And this was in a submission uh, in, into the uh, legislation that brought in the current Act and recognised, and it's from the Council of Trade Unions, quite a substantial submission, talked about rest breaks are also recognised as having a role in ensuring worker productivity. Research undertaken in a car plant in Swansea over a three-year period found that the risk of accidents during the last half hour of a two-hour period of work was double that than for the first half hour. And the suggestion actually was that more frequent breaks could reduce accidents. It was concluded that the increasing, increasing the frequency of rest breaks of workers who operate machinery could substantially reduce industrial accidents and that frequent work breaks, e.g., and they gave the example 10 minutes every hour, can actually improve work performance. Now, I think if we'd looked at some of the research, instead of the hasty response with this bill, we might be in a different place. Thank you. Mr. Speaker.